Well, man, it is great to be here today. Missed y'all guys uh, last week, but uh, just trying to get through some of that crazy coughing and all kinds of things going on and just get a little rest and relaxation there. But uh, I did miss y'all guys. Had you on our minds. Buster did a great job. Thank you guys. They always do. So let's give that band another hand, man. Y'all guys are great today. Appreciate it. You bet. Well, we're back to normal, right? Are we? Well, the Christmas holidays are over, and we've slid into the new year of 2023, so I thought we'd be back to normal. Wouldn't y'all think so? This song um, Randy Travis did, speaking about heroes and friends, there's a verse in there that really stands out. I don't know if you picked up on it, but it meant something to me, and I'm sure it does to you if I mention what I'm talking about here. It said, I grew up with the cowboys I watched on TV. My friends and I sometimes pretended to be. Years have gone by, but now and again, my heart rides the range with my heroes and friends. That's pretty good. Uh, absolutely. Uh, basically, uh, his heroes on TV, it, it, was a, it affected him. It stayed with him. It, it wasn't one of those things that, you know, that uh, like TV is now today, some of these things you hope it don't stay with them. No, I really enjoyed the holidays this year. I really do. I, I love the Christmas holidays. But it seems to me, before the holidays had a, even gotten here, that each year at our household, we're seeing less and less of all of our children and grandchildren join us for the yearly dinner and games and opening of presents. I have one that lives in Colorado Springs. And it's kind of difficult. They've got a, a new baby there. He's what, one year old now, two years old, working on it? He's two? Okay, I don't even know. But I know it's tough. They're, they they wanted to start their own tradition this year, and uh, and I understand that. We've got to make some adjustments there. I have another one that lives down at Corpus Christi, and that that's another story, but they didn't make it either. And we'd already been informed by a couple of our children they'd not be joining us this year. And of course, like I say, both of them live pretty far away, so we kind of understood, right? We kind of understood. We, we, we rolled with the flow, let me put it that way, okay? And of course, I complained, which I complained to my wife about it. And she said, right back to me, well, it might be because you don't really participate in the activities with them as much anymore in the games and the things going on. And, you know, usually I'd sit out. My excuse was I'll allow everyone else to enjoy the activity so I'm not taking up somebody's place there and be a problem. That was my excuse. And at first, I didn't understand what she meant. I didn't, I didn't get it. But, you know, Terry, she didn't hesitate to tell me what she meant. So I got it. <laughs> it turns out that the kids and grandkids did not just need to see me. They needed connection. They needed a connection, a connection time with me. So with that, I chose to get involved and participate in every game and activity that we had that night. And actually, I had a good time. Uh, some of the, the Stewart side is a little competitive, so it did get a little ugly at times. I thought we were going to stop and have a prayer session right in the middle of some of this stuff. But, you know, it was fun. We had a good time. And this year, even though I preached to everyone else about it, I understood more about what was important when it came to family time. I've been missing it. You know, I'm no different than the rest of you here. I, you know, I can preach it, but can I live it? Can I follow up on it? You know, you get so involved with what you need, think everybody else needs, you don't pay attention to what you need. And that's what happened with me. I got caught up in all that. And being there versus being involved makes a huge difference in others' lives, especially our kids and grandkids. It makes a big difference. You know, there are a lot of things that in this world that we don't have enough time for. And I'm sure you all have your own list, as I would have. Now, one thing is, if we look at our teachers today, 
They want their students to get an assignment done, but they don't really have the time to help the students that need extra help because of work overload, shortages, all kinds of reasons. You know, so it's tough. Parents, they don't give enough time playing with their children or just spending time with them. So those kids, they spend time watching TV and playing video games. They're learning a lot in today's society. Parents no longer have time to share a meal around the family dinner table. Biggest excuse, we're too tired. Of course, both spouses work nowadays. Back in the day, only the husband worked, the wife didn't work. So it could be some of that. But we're still missing that opportunity in our lives to spend that quality time. And these are things that parents and even grandparents take for granted. You know, we do take those things for granted. And the thing, main thing missing in all of this is you. I learned that. It's me. Same thing. That's what they need. Preach it, right? Preach it. There you go. Luke chapter 18, verse 15. If you join me there, we're going to start right there this morning. Y'all ignore her over here. That's just. Luke chapter 18, we get at verse 15. His people were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. You know, in this story right here, children are being brought to Jesus. But his helpers or his disciples were saying to them, Leave Jesus alone. Just leave him alone. He doesn't have enough time for these little kids. He's got too much going on. He's a busy man. He didn't, so take him away. He doesn't have time for all this. But when Jesus heard this, and he hears everything, right? So when he heard this, he said, no, stop what you're doing. Let them come to me. It doesn't matter how busy I am. I always have time for children. I love them. And they matter very much to me. So he rebuked them. He said, no, no, no. Don't, don't turn them away. I'm going to make time for them. That's where we fail, right? We don't have time because we don't make time. I found that in myself. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to me. Right? I had so much work going on this past week. I mean, it's been good. Thank you, God. I'm blessed with work, right? But my grandson, my youngest grandson who loves to fish... His birthday's on Thursday. I get a call on Wednesday that he wants me taking fishing for his birthday on Thursday. I got a job I got to finish, right? I had to give that some serious thought. But you know me, I love to fish too. So we went fishing. You bet. 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock we went fishing. And he loves it so much and he's, he's gotten where he listens and he's, he's learned and he improves. And, and we had a great time. And I told him, I said, you know, I'd like to spend all day because it's cold in the morning. The fishing's going to be a little slow. So we're going to have a little hard time catching them, but it'll be a little slow. But it'll, as it gets warmer, I said, would you rather go to work with me and we'll do this work and then come back and fish this afternoon when it's warm? He goes, no. <laughs> okay. So we do. We, we get out there and we go fishing. And, and uh, we had a great time together. You know, it, it's, uh, uh, I don't know, it was different. I think why it was different, because I took the focus off what was going on beyond there, the work and all that, and I focused on the moment that I was in, right? So that changes everything. And we were, and he, I told him, I said, I got, I've got, we got to stop at 12. Well, I have these fancy fish locators on my boat, right? So I can actually see the fish. I can see the fish come bite my lure and all that kind of stuff. That's how advanced it's got, right? So we worked all morning, caught one fish till about 10 o'clock, and then I located them. And when I found them, they were on. We caught fish and had a good time, and it's getting close to 12 o'clock. I guess it's about 1130, and he goes, Poppy, we got to go. I said, okay, we'll work our way back in. So when we work our way back in and we're almost to the boat ramp, 
the screen on my graph just lights up and there are fish everywhere. And he's done putting his pole down. I'm still casting. He's going, we got to go. I said, it's okay. It's okay. We're going to go. Right? So we were a little late. And I kept saying, see, you made me late. And he goes, it wasn't me, you know. So. But it was a great time because I, I figured out it's the little things that make the difference. And we should always remember that all this stuff that we're talking about, about Jesus calling the children, let them come, the whole deal. We should always remember that about Jesus. He always has time for us. Always has time for us. If we're hurting or we're sad or we're lonely or we're feeling nobody loves us, Jesus always does. He's always there for us. He's always going to have time for us. Wouldn't you hate to go to Jesus? He goes, man, I ain't got time for you. Well, he's got time for you if you've got time for him. He's God. So he's never too busy for us to talk to us, share, we can share our problems with him. He's never too busy to listen or be there to help. You say, how does that work? Talk to him. Spend quality time with him, right? Because he wants to spend quality time with us. No different than the children. And the younger generation needs our attention today more than ever in the past. They need our attention. If we don't give them our attention, someone or something will. And it might not be the kind of attention they need to be having. Amen? So it's up to us. In speaking to the dads and granddads here today, we need to be the bull elephants for the younger generation of today. You're sitting there thinking, what is he talking about? Why bull elephants? About 40 years ago, officials at the National Game Reserve in South Africa, they were faced with a growing elephant problem. The, popula the population of African elephants had grown larger than that park or that reserve could sustain. It was a problem. And since there was no really good way to move those large elephants to be relocated, it was determined that only the young elephants would be moved to another reserve. And some of the adult elephants would be culled to control the population. The problem was solved. The minute they, they did that, you know, everybody's got something to eat. It's not overpopulated. It's easy to sustain. So the problem was solved, they thought. 20 years later, the rangers at the other game reserve where all the young ones had been moved began to notice animals living at the reserve were being injured or killed. And we're talking about rhinos and hippos and just all kinds of animals are being hurt or killed. And they thought, well, maybe it's poachers. So they set up game cameras to see what was going on because they wanted to find the culprit that was doing all this. They discovered that it was not poachers at all who were killing these animals, but the juvenile elephants. The young males were enormously aggressive and terrorizing the villages that were there and other animals in the park. They were even charging at humans and the tourists riding in the vehicles going through the park. They'd gotten very aggressive. And the rangers, of course it's government, not really understanding the problem that they created, they approached the elders. And the elders of the villages were consulted, and it was concluded that the cause of the elephant's unusual and troubling behavior was the lack of a role model, in particular adult male leadership, that needed to be there. In normal circumstances, the bull elephants would be a model of behavior for, for their young Helping them to understand how elephants are supposed to act. Well, they had no guidance. And without the male adult guidance, the young elephants became violent and uncontrollable and started to run in gangs. That's crazy, isn't it? We think that's only human nature. And the solution for the delinquent elephants was to send male bull elephants to the new reserve and introduce them back into the herd. And as soon as the males arrived, the younger elephants' violent behavior stopped completely. Although these bull elephants, now you got to understand, they're, they're not their literal parents. They were still able to provide an example 
that the younger elephants needed to learn from. Of course, elephants and people are different. We know that. But this story does highlight an important gospel principle. The father is the vital cornerstone of the family. You are the pastor of your household. You are the leader. You are the bull elephant of your home. Now, I'm not meaning that in a bad way. I'm not telling you to be the tyrant and be, the, be aggressive and mean and all that. I'm saying you are the leader. And if you're not stepping up leading your household, guys, you're failing your family. Because the Bible's real clear about that. And basically, we need more bull elephants in our society today. Amen? That are willing to step up and be a role model and a leader. God word, God's word tells us the father and mother have a solemn responsibility to love and care for each other and for their children. They should work together under the divine union ordained by God to provide the necessities of life and protection for their family's lives while providing a proper environment of love and righteousness, providing for their physical and spiritual needs. Now, guys, that's where we kind of break down. You know, we're pretty good at taking care of the physical needs, but are we spiritually leading our children in the right direction? Are we building a firm foundation that they're going to grow up on? You know, I've been told when my kids were growing up, I was pretty, I was pretty tough. I was pretty hard. Sometimes, well, life is going to be hard, and life is going to be tough. And we think we're preparing them for it. And in that time, before knowing God real well and being a Christian, I didn't do it that way. There were things that I wish I could go back and repair. But it's what I'm doing from that day forward that makes a difference. It's what I learned that took me all these years. I'll be 67 years old in March, and I'm just now learning about quality time with my kids and grandkids. That's bad. I knew it. I just wasn't living it. And I could see the effect. They don't want to come around. They don't want to come around anymore. I never, never, even Terry would have missed being with my mom and dad at Christmas. Never would have done that. But it's the difference in, in our younger generation now in the way they look at things. And it's got a lot to do with what we do and what we say and the way we act. You know, if you're, your parents or grandparents or whatever, and you're always fighting and arguing, cussing and yelling, they don't want to be around that. Can't blame them. So if you're doing that, reevaluate where you're at. And try to fix it. Call on God. I've heard this said. I take care of my child. We are best friends. Oh my gosh. We are best friends. Let me say this to you. Your child doesn't need to be your best friend. They can find friends at school or with other kids. You don't need to be their friend. You need to be their dad and mom. That's what you need to be. You need to step up and be the bull elephant of your family. And lead them by example. Amen. I learned that. I'm, I mean I'm learning. I'm not just preaching to you. Once again I'm talking to myself. Am I not? Yeah, get on me. The younger generation of today needs input. And they need instructions from good Christian adult leadership. That's what they need. It's missing. You know, we take a prayer out of school. They look up to all these sports guys. You know, a great thing is we saw this past week. They wasn't no kneeling on the flag. They were kneeling for prayer for a guy that's hurting the NFL, right? That's the way the kneeling needs to work, right? It's great to see Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 6, beginning at verse 20. My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will speak to you. Amen. Much of our thinking today tells us that the younger generation doesn't want to listen to older adults or their parents. Isn't that true? That's what society tells us, and that's what our kids basically tell us. The younger generation doesn't want any part of it. It might be just because our actions don't match our words. That could be going on. We talk the talk, but we're not walking the walk. 
We instruct them to do about doing the right thing, and then we do the opposite of what we're trying to teach them to do. Don't do that. Do as I say, not as I do. That's not going to work. Well, I hate for God to say that to me. We can find ourselves even instructing and correcting our children in the wrong way. Or the younger generation. I'm not just talking about kids. We're a reflection to younger generation. We have youth in this church. We have children in this church. We need to be that example. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 in the NIV says, Fathers, do not evasorate your children. Instead, bring them up in training and instructions of the Lord. But if you look at it in the ESV, English Standard Version, it's a little easy to understand. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instructions of the Lord. Amen. And if we're not, have a committed relationship with the Lord, we really don't know how to do that. If we're not searching his word right here in this book, we really don't know how to do that. We're just parenting from the hip, right? Some of you younger folks need, I'm telling you, you need to listen because your kids grow up to be just like you. What you put out there is what you're going to get, right? Rather, we should be following God's instructions when teaching and correcting our children. Follow his instructions in doing it. You may get the government called on you because he says don't spare the rod, right? We should as Christians be the role models that reflect what are good and proper what a proper proper prosperous life should look like to others. We should reflect that. Not just to the children, but to the younger generation. It had to be brought to my attention what was missing with my own children and grandchildren. What was missing in all of this stuff going on with my kids and grandkids was me. I let them down. And I don't mind admitting that. I, I know. But I had to be told by somebody that doesn't hesitate to tell me. Today, though, I pray I can be that bull elephant. That God would want me to be for my family and friends. That I can be the role model for our younger generation right here in the church that they might mimic and not be a missing person in their lives, avoiding what's important. Are you men here today? Are you willing to be that bull elephant for your family, your friends, and the younger generation today? I believe we have many here that are. If you're not, I pray you make that commitment today. Say, I'm ready. I'm going to be what they need. I always say we may not change this whole world, but we can change the piece of it that we're in. Amen? The piece we deal with each day. And if you say you're one of those persons that's ready to step up and be a bull elephant for the younger generation, your family, and your grandkids, thank you. I believe God will bless you for it. Psalms, we're going to close right here. Psalms 127 verse 3. I think this is Rodney Rickman's, one of his favorite scriptures. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning. We lift this beautiful day to you, Father Father, we're thankful that we've rolled over here in a new year. We look for just some exciting things to happen this year. That we put behind everything that drug us down last year and we look to just make it better this year. And everything we do, Father, be with us, guide us, direct us. Father, I pray today that we will step up, especially the men, to be the bull elephant. It's willing to be the role model for our younger generation in today. Father, I pray that we search your wisdom throughout your word in the Bible. Father, that we would follow your rules and instructions on how to be that better person. And Father, that we'd turn to you for advice when we're just lost as a goose. Father, be with us. Be with these folks that left today as they leave here today. Father, protect them. Guide us throughout the week. We love you. We praise you. We give all the glory to you. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen.